Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Cassie Viela and I'm a realtor, property manager, and investor here in San Antonio, Texas. On this channel, we talk about all things real estate from data and investing to home and garden. So if that's your cup of tea, please like, subscribe. Um, I have all my social medias linked below. So today I'm really excited. We're gonna be doing a, another top five. Uh, we're gonna to do top five mistakes that home buyers make. So we're gonna just jump right in. So number one is not understanding the market. The market can change very quickly. Uh, that's why I do a, mo a monthly market update where I look at all the numbers, I look at how many showings there are, I look at all of the data that I have at my disposal to try to figure out, okay, are there any fluctuations? How much of a seller's market is it really? Like, are we seeing a, a change? Are we seeing an increase on days on market? It's really important to go in knowing that uh, because if you are in a huge seller's market like we are now, you need to be prepared as a buyer. You That changes your behavior. That changes um, everything you do, really. It's gonna change what you can ask for. Um, it's gonna change how quickly you have to make offers, things like that. So you need to understand what the market is actually doing. Um, you need to understand on a hyper-local um, perspective what the market is doing. So realtors have access to data on individual neighborhoods or individual pockets and so yes across the board you know the market's crazy but there might be pockets where it's different or there might be price ranges where it's different so you really want to know everything you possibly can about the market before you jump in and start looking at homes making offers etc and this is a good time to stop and say i do have a full um series on how to buy a home it's like start to finish um, every little step, like, you know, what title insurance means, like everything you can need to know about buying a home. So, um, well, probably not everything, but a lot. <laughs> so if you uh, want some of that, I'll have my editor link it below as well. Number two, big mistake is ignoring what I call the big four. Obviously, you're going to get an inspection. Like, if I'm your realtor, I'm not letting you buy a house without an inspection unless you're like an investor and, and that, that's a different can of worms. If you're a regular buyer, you're getting an inspection. Even with that inspection, you know, the big four, the really expensive things, the things that are, that I think are really the make or break problems are the roof, the foundation, in Texas and San Antonio, the HVAC, so the air conditioning unit, and electrical. Um, so there are red flags on all of those uh, that you can look for. Um, you can look at the roof, you can uh, foundation. When I go on showings, I always take a, a small heavy ball. And um, if you suspect there might be foundation problems, you can just put that ball and see if it rolls. And that tells you. So um, little things like that. Look for the roof, the foundation, HVAC. If it's a really old unit, you're probably gonna be replacing it soon. Um, electrical, things like that. Now, again, if we're in a seller's market, there may not be a lot you can ask for, but you, you know, knowing your own situation and knowing the market, you gotta make informed decisions. Number three, uh, this one's a big one, uh, waiting in a hot market. So in the market we're in now, in the market San Antonio has really been in since about 2017, you cannot wait to make an offer. If you look at a house and you like it, you have to make an offer instantly. Um, you have to make an offer that day. There are going to be multiple offers probably the first day it's on the market. Um, so you've just, you cannot wait. Um, I have clients sometimes that say like, oh, I just wanna sleep on it a little bit. While you're sleeping on it, somebody else got the offer accepted. So um, I hate that. I really hate that because I don't like to be rushed making decisions either. I really like to, you know, really dig into everything. The good thing is that, um, you know, you have an option period. So you can make the offer and then you can think about it more during your option period. That's what that option period is for. So take heart, like you can, you know, your option period might cost like $100, so that sucks, but that gives you an opportunity to do your due diligence and to look into things more, um, you know, but you've got the house under contract, you're not gonna lose it. So waiting in a hot market is number three. Uh, number four, this is another big one, not understanding how much money you need for the transaction. A lot of people are just like, oh, okay, I saved up 
5% because I'm going to put 5% down. You know, I, I saved up my down payment or I saved up 20% or whatever it is. I saved up my down payment. Well, especially in this market um, where it's a seller's market, you're going to be paying closing costs. Um, it's very unlikely you're going to get an offer accepted and the seller is going to pay any of your closing costs really in the market we're in right now. I'm filming this February 2022. It, you know, so you're going to have closing costs. Um, closing costs can be, can get up there. They can be anywhere from, you know, two or 3,000 on a really cheap home to up around six to 9,000 on a more expensive home. So you really want to know what your closing costs are going to be going in. Your um, mortgage broker or lender should be able to give you an estimate. It's not going to be exact. It's just nobody knows what it's actually going to be until like the day before closing. I know that's frustrating. Um, so just have your mortgage broker estimate and then pad that a little for what you're expecting. That's what I do. I just add an extra like thousand dollars on there for miscellaneous nonsense, right? So closing cost, your down payment. Okay, we know those two. You're going to closing with this amount of money. Pretty much everybody that's buying a home kind of realizes that. The things that people aren't as ready for when you are looking at the home and you're going to make an offer, you need to, even before you even walk in a home, you need to have some things ready. We talked about how quickly you need to be able to make offers. So what you need to have ready is um, your letter from your lender, but you also need to have ready your earnest money. Your earnest money is going to be in San Antonio right now is typically going to be 1% of the purchase price of the home. So if you're buying a $300,000 home, you're going to have to write a check to the title company the day your offer is accepted for $3,000. You need to have that ready to go. I've had clients before where they maybe had the money in a bank account that was like an online savings bank and they needed to transfer it and it was it was going to take long. You have, to, you have to do it within three days of the offer getting accepted. So sometimes some glitches like that in like banking and transfer can happen. Um, you know, you need to have it in an account where you can write a check out of that account or wire it. Um, so just have that ready to go. So this is one thing like even um, if you're getting a VA loan and you're doing 0% down and like you somehow got the seller to cover all of your closing costs. So you don't have to bring any money into this home, right? No, wrong. You're still going to have to put the earnest money down at the beginning. You might get it back at closing, but you still have to have it to put down on the home. So um, just know your earnest money, uh, your option fees typically going to be around $100. You're also going to need to pay the inspector. So you're going to get an inspection. That's going to be $300 to $500, depending on the size of the home generally. Um, so you want to you want to have that ready to pay the inspector. Um, and then there also might be miscellaneous things like um, you might have to pay for the appraisal out of pocket before closing. So um, what I would what I would advise you to do as a buyer is kind of take all of these costs into account and um, add them all up and then just put them in a bank account that is like maybe a savings that's attached to your checking so that everything's ready to go at a moment's notice and you can write a check and cover all of these little expenses because there are very real consequences if you don't hit the right dates on these little things. Um, so just having your money ready to go, again, in an account that you can do a wire transfer or a check. Double check that that's possible from your account. I've literally gotten to closing and the client is, is like, I couldn't transfer like this bank I use for some reason doesn't do wire transfers. So check all of that. Make sure it's ready to go. So you have your finances ready. That was number four. Number five um, is like the mantra of real estate, right? Location, location, location. So the things that I, I see people, um, you know, really disliking after they move into a home, uh, it, that's what I'm going to talk about. So when you buy a home, you usually buy it because of the things you like, right? Oh, it's got a pretty kitchen. I love the yard, whatever. But after you move in, what is going to determine if you actually like living in that home is usually the problems 
that you have. Every home is gonna have problems. It just depends on what problems you're okay with solving, right? You, you need to take that into account. Like, what are the negatives of this home that I'm buying and can I live with those negatives? That's very, very, very important. Some of the negatives, some of the things you can get wrong. Uh, wrong neighborhood. So by this, I mean, look at your commute. So San Antonio is really sprawling, okay? Um, if you're, especially if you want a new home, that is gonna be so far, it's gonna be outside of 1604. Um, you need to look at the commute because some of these neighborhoods that they're building, your, your commute into town is going to be significant. Um, I would, anytime you're buying a home, no matter where you're buying it, if you have to travel into work or like a particular school or whatever, like if you're gonna have to travel to a place on a regular basis, go into Google Maps, but don't just map it whatever time of day. Google Maps has a feature where you can put in a specific time of day and have like the average traffic for that time of day. That's really important. So do it for your commute time and understand how long it's gonna take you to get across town. That's so, so important. Again, just because of how big San Antonio has gotten, um, it can really, there's a lot of driving. It's a lot of driving to live in San Antonio. So that if that's important to you, if you hate driving, you're gonna hate having a new home in one of these, these subdivisions, right? Again, pick your problem. Uh, so the commute is huge. That's the one I hear people really just, I, I, I have had people that, not that I represented, <laughs> that want to sell their home like three months after moving in because they're like, I didn't realize how far out this was. So commute is huge. Um, neighborhood is huge. Obviously, you want to enjoy your neighborhood. Um, you know, whatever that means to you, it's different for different people. Uh, one thing that I like to do, you know, people ask me about safety a lot. I'm not allowed to, because of the Fair Housing Act, I'm really not allowed to say like, oh, this is a safe neighborhood. This is not a safe neighborhood. Um, so, you know, obviously I can't do that. But what I recommend people do is go walk around that neighborhood in the late evening. Like go around nine o'clock, go take a walk around, see how you feel. You know, see how your gut feels. Do you feel safe? That's what I have always done when I buy a home. And so, you know, you just, you get a middle of the day is a different vibe <laughs> than late at night. So you want to make sure that the neighborhood you're moving into is good around the clock. That's important. Another thing that, uh, you know, amenities, things like that might be important to you as well. You want to look at your neighbors. <laughs> you can change anything in your house. If you hate if you move in and you end up hating the paint color, that's easy to change. You can change that. You have control over that. You could never, ever, ever, ever change your neighbors. <laughs> if your neighbor is like a hoarder and their backyard is full of junk, that's not going to change. <laughs> so that's really important. You want to look at that. Not just look at the house that you're viewing. You want to make sure you look at the neighbors across the street down the street, you wanna kinda of just make sure that, you know, there's nothing that's gonna bother you. I know that the first house we lived in, I ended up really hating it because our neighbors way down the street were like street racers or something. They had like the really loud cars. I know I sound like an 80 year old woman, but it's fine, that's who I am. They, they had these really loud cars and they would zoom down, the, and my street was very short. It wasn't a long street, but they would zoom down the street um, and I had little, I had toddlers. So we ended up moving mostly because of that. Like I was so terrified that uh, the kids would get run over. So even like stuff like that, you wanna just really investigate <laughs> your street, your neighborhood, your neighbors, make sure that it's, that it's somewhere you're gonna wanna live long-term. Okay, so I talked about busy roads a little bit. Well, I talked about the street racers. Busy roads would be like, if you're on a major thoroughfare, Again, if you have kids, that might in influence your decision, right? I don't want to live on a busy street if I have children because I want them to be able to play in the front yard. So, um, and thoroughfares in San Antonio are kind of weird um, because it can look like a regular street, um, but it, it might be like the main artery into the neighborhood. So you have actually a lot of people going by even though 
it's it looks on you know when you visit it looks like a regular street so again that's where kind of being there a while taking a walk around you'll know pretty quickly oh, okay there's like a lot of traffic on this street versus the street behind it if your house backs up to a busy street like your backyard fence is against like a major road um, you want to take that into account because that is going to lower the value of your house a little bit because it's harder you know people don't want to be up against that noise so stuff like that you want to make sure you account for streets noise if there's you know um, there's a neighborhood in Stone Oak that there's uh, like a concrete company and there's a lot of like loud noise that you can hear in that neighborhood. So you just want to be aware of what those things are. And then finally, you want to investigate the HOA. So you want to look up the HOA documents and you just want to make sure that there's nothing weird or that there's nothing that they prevent you from doing that you want to do. Like if you want to put in a pool and they are like no pools or, you know, if you want to have chickens and they're like no chickens, whatever it is, whatever it is you want to have, you want to make sure that the HOA is not going to give you a problem. And, and I would say like HOAs are different. You can have HOAs that like basically do nothing unless somebody reports something, somebody and it's like an actual big problem. And you can have HOAs that are like, don't plant those purple flowers. You can only plant pink flowers. <laughs> like you can have really severe HOAs. And so you want to make sure, I mean, I guess that floats some people's boat, but a lot of people are, are kind of like, mm, that's a little much. So make sure the HOA is something you can live with. Um, so those are the five, those are the big five mistakes. Um, I, there are more, of course, a lot more, um, but those are the ones that really impact uh, your enjoyment of the home and the transaction the most that, that I think. Drop a comment below if there's like another mistake that you think of that I missed, um, or if you've experienced any of these, uh, definitely if you have a horror story, <laughs> drop that below. Um, if you like this video, again, it really helps uh, to leave a like or subscribe or comment um, or, you know, go like the social medias. And um, I appreciate that so, so much. I really, really do. Um, you're the best. See you next time.